Just got this telehandler. I really don't know anything about it other than it has a little bit of blow by and it's hard to start when it's warm. I got this from the same guy I got my excavator from. Um, that excavator turned out pretty good so I pretty much trusted him. It was kind of sight unseen. I, I saw it before but I'd never seen it run or anything. So the batteries were dead. I just charged them up. So let's see if we can start this thing. Hey, can you turn that key on? I'm finally ready to work on this thing. I've just been so busy that I never had a chance. So we know that it starts, we know that it drives, but it's got a bunch of other issues with it. But for right now, I haven't started this in probably six months, so let's see if it even starts. Okay, I got nothing. I got the batteries charging. We had like 12.3 volts, so the batteries weren't completely drained. 
and I got nothing. Not even a click. I can hear a click in the motor when I turn the key on. I'm assuming that's the fuel shutoff solenoid. But I got nothing for the starter. It doesn't start like this, it starts with the push button. And I got nothing. So I guess the first thing is I'm going to take off this dash and get to that button. Try to jump it and see if that does it. If not, we'll dig deeper. So just for the sake of testing this out, I'm going to turn on the key. And I'm just going to try to jump these terminals here. So I just let this sit overnight and charge up. Let's see if that made a difference. Sometimes when these solenoids don't see enough volts, they will not make contact after sitting for a while. So let's see if that's the case. I've had that happen a bunch of times before. I still got this apart here. Okay, let's put this back on and try to start this. We got this thing running. You can see there is a lot of blow by though. So we might have a lot of work on our hands here. But one of the first things I need to do is get some of these leaks taken care of because every time I move it, it just spills oil everywhere. So the two biggest ones that I need to worry about, this is probably the most important one right here. This cylinder right here is leaking a lot. And you can see it's gone right on the motor. That oil is already sizzling. So it wouldn't take much more heat and you'll have a fire. I'm going to put a chain from there to there because otherwise this cylinder is going to want to creep down. Thank you. 
So I think what I'm going to end up doing is, now that I have the boom up in the air, I'm going to take the crane and support it so it stays where it is. And then I'm going to take this big pin out and then I'm going to retract these cylinders a little bit until they're past this point and then they should just drop right down. So I'll put a ratchet strap underneath here. Once I got this side disconnected and flopped down, then I'm going to take over here and take that pin out and kind of maybe even just go up with that one. And then I was thinking once I disconnect all this stuff, I can shoot it out the back there. That's just water dripping off of there because the boom is at a different position now. In preparation for this project, I did buy all kinds of different caps for these. So hopefully we have what we need. I was just looking things over and I just realized this pin right here is going to be hard to take out going this way or even that way because I can't really get a hammer on it because this is in the way. So I'm going to go up with this until it's over this cab. I'm going back and forth about repacking both of these cylinders. This one doesn't appear to be leaking. It's this one that's leaking. It's actively dripping. This one definitely has some, some dark spots like it's been collecting dust from oil that's been coming out of it. So I really think it's a good idea to do this one too. But I think the best thing to do is to start with this one and see how bad it is. See how much work it is. I only got a seal kit for one of them, but that was kind of stupid. I should have got two. But at the same time, I also wasn't sure whether I was going to be capable of doing it or not. So I didn't want to buy two seal kits and then end up having to bring it to a hydraulic shop and have them put their own seal kit in it. I think my next move on this project is going to be taking off this muffler and then I can get to this cylinder easier. And what I'm going to do is weld on two small tabs about 180 degrees apart from each other on this just right here on the cap or the gland nut. Then I'm gonna make up a spanner wrench for that. And I'm gonna try to crack this loose before I actually even, really even before I take that pin out. I think it's important that I at least get this loose
So this is what I came up with for a spanner wrench. I got about an eighth of an inch on each side of play and basically I got a half circle there and we'll worry about the handle in a little while but let's get this cut out make sure it fits and then we'll keep working at it. So I think all this was is a little nylon piece that goes into the threads and kind of cross threads it almost so that you can't back that gland nut off without taking this out. So I'm just going to use this one because it's easier to get to as an example. So now what I'm going to do is weld on a little nub right here, a little nub right here, and it's going to catch one side of one and the other side of the other so that it's going to push this one and pull this one. Okay, there's nothing complicated about this. All it is is a little notch over here so that I'm pulling on that and I'm pushing on this. So now I'm just gonna attach a little handle to this and we'll see if we can get this off. So I guess let's get the other side and then we can get these cylinders out of here. All right, so this side isn't so easy. You can see I bent it pretty good. I'm kind of afraid that because I'm underneath of it while I'm doing this, that the more it bends, the more it's gonna go sideways and it could hit me in the head or something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gouge this weld out 
I'm gonna put on a much stronger piece of steel. This is only a 16th inch. But I thought since it was so long that it would do the trick, but I'm gonna put something on that's like quarter wall. So I think the only option at this point is to go ahead and take these cylinders out and I'm gonna have to set up some sort of bench with a pin so that I can hold it. I just made up this jig real quick and I got like a one by two square stock in there to drive that pin out. Just kind of triangulated a little sleeve for it.
So that is that is fully supported by the crane right now. Those cylinders are completely loose, so now let's drop them down and start capping off these lines. So I went ahead and got an assortment of caps and plugs. I think it's going to be a JIC. So to get this bottom pin off, it's it's really kind of silly how they did this. Because they got this hydraulic line right in the way. So it takes an inch and a quarter wrench to get that out. So I set up this quick little jig here just to hold this. That way I can hit the pin in there.
so as painful as it is for me to say this, I think I'm going to hand this off to somebody else. I'm sure I could repack them, but my time is probably better spent doing things like building my house, because right now I should be building my house. I shouldn't even be doing this. But I kind of need it for the house, so I'm kind of torn between the two. But if I can pass this off to somebody else to do it, you know, the one good thing about bringing it to a hydraulic shop is if the rod is scored at all, they can actually weld it and then put it on the lathe and turn it down again and they can make it like new. I'm going to take a guess that this thing probably weighs about 350 pounds. The only way that I'm going to make this work is if I build a jig for it. Something, I could build a bench but that would take forever. I could build something on the ground and make like a triangular thing that has like a, like a V-shaped on the bottom and then another V-shaped piece on the top and then you clamp them down with two bolts and they have like long legs going out on each side. If I did that for there and there, and then like used wood where the V is inside of it so it doesn't completely damage these, then I could probably make a jig so that I could turn these. I can't even get this out of here right now. I can't even pull the rod out. It's just so massive that I, I just don't have the equipment to work on it. And like I said, I could make something, but I don't have like three or four days to spend doing this. I, I could be building my house. So sometimes being smart is knowing when to give up and give in, which is very rare for me, but you know, I'm going to let this one go, let them handle it. So let me show you where I'm at with this machine. This is a year later, almost right to the day, a year later. And I sent these cylinders out a year ago to get rebuilt. And finally, after bugging the place for a while, I, they finally told me that they couldn't do them. So I went and got them back. And I sent them off to somebody else that could do them and he's already done a week later. So, so I should be getting those shipped back any day now. And the other cylinder that I really need to fix before I can operate this machine is this one right here. This is a tilt cylinder. And it's leaking. It's, it's leaking so bad that it's squirting a stream like eight feet out from this one place on it. I've had this strap on it for a year now, and this works fine. It's holding it up, because otherwise it'll just droop down. So I want to take this out and get it fixed. I'm going to try to do it myself. It's a much smaller cylinder with a much smaller rod in it. The piston's just as big as the other one, but the rod is a lot smaller. I don't know if that makes any difference, but I'm going to try to do it myself. At this point, I'm working on my floor up there, my second floor, and I really need something that can lift materials up there. It'd be nice to actually put a basket on it and be able to lift people up there too, but I'll be happy if I can just lift a bunch of rebar and stuff like that up there. So this is the first time I really needed this machine, so now it's kind of kicked into high gear. And I was going to fix everything on this machine for this video, but I'm just going to end up fixing what I can to use it for right now, and then we'll continue on later.
get this pin from this side, but this cylinder's in the way, so I'm gonna tilt it. This thing runs a lot better than it did before. I put two new batteries in it. I didn't realize it needed them really bad. get a better swing on it now. I would think so. I don't think it's doing anything. This pin for some reason isn't budging and I'm peening over the ends. So I'm not gonna waste any more time with this. I got about five minutes into it and I just don't have the patience to put any more. So I'm gonna cut the pin out. So I'm gonna use a carbide tip blade on the Sawzall, make a slice right there and a slice right there. And that's it, I'm not messing around with this thing.
do that.
So if I had not cut that, I might have been able to get that with this sledgehammer. If you get such a good swing that both your arms end up on the very end of the sledgehammer and you're swinging with everything you got, that's when you have the full force. And that's the only time that these pins would move. But I, I think there's a chance I could have got it without cutting it, but I kind of lost my patience because every pin on this machine has been like this. Another problem I could fix while I'm waiting for the cylinders this dash doesn't do anything. Nothing moves, nothing lights up. Um, let's see. I can't even see it, even if it did. I could maybe see some movement, but I can't tell what anything is. I don't even know what that gauge is. You can't see it. So let's take this off, and we're going to take that off and see. I don't know where the fuse panel is on this, but we'll find it. Nothing even flickers on it, so I have no idea. It says seven, 7,300 hours. So what I think I figured out is that it's not getting power and maybe not even ground. These three wires are unhooked. I'm thinking that this is the power when you turn the accessory switch on, which is the ignition. And then this is this should have ground. But let's just try putting the power to it and see. I just got power going right to the ignition here. Got a jumper wire. on okay that's promising all right it does something doesn't look like those are correct transmission temperature is like 170 water temperature is 195 it wasn't running at all so I'm sure that that's not correct but I guess it's a start in the right direction. Maybe the ground has something to do with the accuracy. So I think I'm actually back feeding by hooking up to this red wire right here. I think this red wire is supposed to go to something right here to power it. 
And then I found another wire that was loose down here. That's this red wire. And when I put that against there, turn it on, then I also have dash power. And I think that beeping is because of the engine oil. It's sensing low, it's sensing low oil pressure. So let's start it, see if that goes away. Okay. So that's good. So at least we have an oil pressure sensor warning. And it also has an alternator functioning light there too which the alternator was not working actually, so let's go see if it's working now. Should be like 13 to 14 volts. So I don't think the alternator is working or something's not hooked up. But that's fine. We got much bigger fish to fry than that. Honestly, I need this machine so bad that if I can just get the water temperature to function, then I think I'm all right with the rest of it. As long as it tells me low oil pressure and high water temperature, that's all I really care about right now. I don't care about the fuel gauge, the transmission tank. I'm not going to be using it enough for that stuff. All right, so I figured out neither one of the grounds on this dash are hooked up so as soon as i hook the black wire up to ground that's what happens and you can actually hear the hour meter counting sounds like a watch so everything looks a lot closer to what it should be transmission temp is all the way down water temperature is just above 100 and it's pretty hot out right now and i started it up a few times so that seems right the fuel is pretty much full so that seems right so I think we got that fixed fixed as much as I care about anyways so all I really had to do was just put one of these on the end of the wire and then reattach it inside So I think I could put the dash back together now. Everything's got an official connection. Let's try it out one more time before I do that. Yep. I can hear the hour meter ticking. I guess the only way we'll know for sure is running it a little while, watching the water temp go up. And maybe the trans temp, but you'd really have to be using it a lot for that temperature to go up. 
So I think the only thing now is just put the dash back and I'll have to put a new piece of glass on it. I got the cylinder braced up pretty good. It's not gonna move. I got this piece of wood here hitting this point, which is steel. I believe this is aluminum, so I don't wanna press against that. I could take this off, but I figured if I don't have to, then that's even better. But this two by four is pushing against this, and then it's pushing against there, so it can't go anywhere. This is definitely secured good enough. It's just I can't get a good enough grip on it. Also, when I'm pulling on the binder, it's pushing on this one spot right here, which might not be helping it too much. It almost looks like this ring is aluminum, or maybe stainless steel or something. It's weird. It's not, it's very soft. One other thing I can do while I'm waiting for these cylinders to come in, I can take this exhaust manifold off. That's something that needs to be done. It's got a big crack in it. I'll show you when I get it out of there. It's kind of hard to see, but these bolts look like they should come out pretty easy.
That was cracked right there. Actually, here's another one that's cracked. Part of the flange stuck to the gasket. There's still a little piece left in there. Since this is a non-turbo engine, I'm not going to worry about the exhaust manifold gaskets. It's probably a good idea to replace them, but I'm not too worried about it. I just got all the pine needles and debris out of here and stuff so it doesn't catch on fire. So I'm ready to install the new exhaust manifold. Okay, so I've replaced or at least disturbed a lot of exhaust manifolds. This is definitely by far the easiest and quickest one. I think I got 10 minutes into this whole process and that's including cleaning up. So I knew I wasn't getting away that easy. So kind of bad news here. I got an exhaust leak and it's probably most of what I'm hearing right below this whole assembly, right at the bottom. I could feel a massive exhaust leak coming out of there. I don't know if it's a crack or if it's a hole. I'm not sure why that would be there. Hopefully I don't need a new head and hopefully it's something to do with the return port there. There's this seal right here. You can see that seal has a has a break in it. Hopefully that's what the problem is. And the thing about this seal is 
if this is leaking it makes me wonder am I losing compression because of that because that would explain the lack of power if one cylinder's not getting near the compression that the other ones are then that could explain the smoke and loss of power so what started as a disaster may actually end up helping me to diagnose the rest of the problem with this machine which I was going to work with the low power issue for now because I figured it needed new rings and probably new sleeves in it but I didn't want to do that until my house is done being built but if I just need to replace these seals on the injectors then I can do that now and maybe I'll get my power back so I'm not too familiar with these pencil style injectors like this but I do believe there's supposed to be a seal right here which there is none on this one that would seal it from the actual cylinder itself so just that much goes into the cylinder and that seal seals it up so I think what happened here is that one went bad and it disappeared somewhere and then I think what happened is because of the pressure this one went bad after that I'm just speculating but but I firmly believe if I replace these seals I'm gonna end up with a lot better compression and I'll probably end up with no smoke hopefully that's the case because I was messing with the rest of the problems on that telehandler I'm gonna to elect to not try to go any further with this cylinder I'm just gonna drop this off to somebody at this point I'm waiting for parts for multiple things so this is not gonna really delay me if I have to drop it off somewhere for a week I did buy four new injectors, but I'm just going to put this one in for now. We can do that later once it's running and moving and stuff. See that little seal on the end? That's what seals it into the chamber so that exhaust gases don't come out. So there's another injector here that's leaking this one right here so let's get that one replaced something interesting about this find when this was running I was trying to feel for exhaust leaks and I put my hand on the injector lines the return lines here this one felt like it was knocking a lot it was almost moving the fitting it was just violently knocking the rest of them felt smooth
Well, at least that seal's still there, but it's most likely worn out. Sounds really raggedy, but it's got a lot less smoke now. That knock that I was just talking about on that one injector line is gone too. Now it's nice and smooth when you're running it. All four lines feel smooth when you put your hand on them. But you know what's funny about this whole situation? Since I put the exhaust manifold on and I fixed the leaking injectors that were leaking exhaust, it still doesn't sound any different from before I changed the manifold. Changing the manifold didn't make it sound any better and fixing the leaks on the injector didn't make it sound any better. Still sounds like it's like leaking exhaust from one of the cylinders because it's like a slow tick. It's not a fast tick that you'd have if it was leaking after the manifold and between the muffler. All right, so I did get this cylinder back. This gave the guy a problem too. The gland nut didn't want to come off, so he actually had to cut it and then re-weld it and put it back on. So this cost me $650 in labor plus the seal kit, which was like $150. So that's a lot of money for a cylinder, but it is a pretty big cylinder. I do kind of feel better about giving these jobs to somebody else to do because this kind of equipment is the type that if it fails, somebody could die. So it probably is worth a little bit extra money and aggravation sometimes if you have somebody else do it. Because for instance, I'm gonna put a basket on here as a platform for people to work on. And so there's gonna be people on here. So so now all of a sudden, because people's lives are at risk, it does change the dynamics of everything. And these cylinders have a block here, which, which if one of these hoses fails, the cylinder doesn't just fall to the ground. It locks it up. Because even on this tilt right here, if there was a platform on there and all of a sudden it just gave way, well, somebody could fall out of the basket. So I also bought a new pin for here. And I'm not sure if this is just the way it is or if I got the wrong pin, but it actually fits perfectly in there. And there was another pin that was metric that was very close to this one. This is an inch and a half pin, but there was another one that was metric that was really close to that. And it might have been that metric pin, but I'm actually much more satisfied with this pin because this one goes in pretty easily. But without any force, that pin goes through there. But it's not, it's got like very small amount of play. But I would rather have that than have a seized pin and have to go through all that. Now when it goes over to this side, it isn't quite perfect. That's not the pin, that's the alignment of these two bores here. So 
so I do have to beat it in instead of just pushing it in like by hand but but both sides go in pretty easy so that's nice but what I'm gonna also do is ream this out I'm gonna hone each one of these basically to take off the grits and burrs and stuff like that but it'll also oversize it very slightly and now make it go in even better and you can do that with these because these are boss bushings here which means that it doesn't move inside of those so it, that doesn't see any action the action is all right here the cylinder pivots on the pin right here so that's the one that actually moves back and forth this one is stationary and it has a bolt in it to make sure it's stationary so as long as you get it pretty tight it's good to go it never gets greased or anything this pin only cost me forty dollars so that's good because I kind of felt bad about cutting that pin out but now I'm feeling pretty confident that that was a good decision that I made because seeing now that these are not aligned perfectly I can see why it didn't want to come out when they were linked up once I split them apart it was still really hard to get them out but I was able to do it and I might not have been able to get it if I didn't cut it That's always nice. Put it in my hand, and there's no more play. The only thing about this pin is it's two inches longer than it needs to be, but it's got a hole, so I can lock it in here with this hole. And it's just gonna stick out a little bit there, that's not a big deal.
That's good, no leaks. Everything works fine. So now I'm just waiting on those two cylinders. It should be any day now. so I finally got these cylinders back this was like a major nightmare to get these done I told you guys at first that the first place had them for almost a year and then told me that they couldn't do them then I got them to the second guy and he did them actually relatively quick I was able to ship it over to him um, like three states over for like $125 and he had it in like two days and then he he took like a week to get them done which is understandable but then it took like three weeks for these things to come back to me and I don't understand that like it took two days to get it to them and then three weeks for me to get it back there was like a couple of different shipping places involved and all of them had like some sort of mistake it like happened one after another but anyways they're here now so now I can finally put these on and this cost me two grand to get these done and then I had to buy new safety blocks they're like counterbalance valves on there and that was another $500. So I got $2,500 into these cylinders. But I did price out new cylinders and they were $20,000 a piece. So I guess that is a pretty good savings. Before I put these cylinders in, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the tilt function in the front. I'm gonna hone out these bores right here. And I'm also gonna take the pins and really get them down good. But the most important thing is to get these bores cleaned up and I'm gonna slightly hone them out. The goal is to be able to push that pin through with very little effort before I ever even try to put the cylinders in. And I'm gonna do the same thing with that boss right there. Because again, this is the same situation. These are bosses, so the pin should never move inside of them. It should only move where there's nothing there right now, right there. The cylinder moves on the pin so there's three bosses because there's two on the outside and then one in the middle
I got all the bores ready to accept the pin. It slides right in without even a hammer. So I'm ready to install these cylinders. So I'm gonna install one at a time. I got a ratchet strap right there. So as soon as that cylinder goes past the point of tipping, then it'll fall onto that ratchet strap. We'll have to see how it goes. Maybe I'll put this one in first, slide the pin in just slightly to hold it, and then I'll put the other one in and push the pin all the way through. Pretty close right there. There we go.
don't got anything. Alright, you're uh you're into the outside collar, so Yeah. If you got it spinning, now's the time. The good thing is since we're doing it like this, it's actually giving us double the strength because it's acting, that's acting as a pulley right now. Okay. There it goes. Kind of twisting it though as you go though. Yeah. Too much. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Oops. That's too much. level with that one. Right there, perfect. Um like we're doing something. Yeah, you're going in. Alright. So. Yeah. Perfect. Look at that. Oh my goodness, that was great. for the other one. Hold on. Yeah, it's like Alright. Go up I guess. Yep, yeah, there you go. Alright, a couple more. That that's good right there. Right there? That was basically the hard part, but there is still a bunch of work to do with these hoses, being that they're twin cylinders like this, and the safety block and everything else, it's kind of complicated, but I think I got a diagram of how I can do it. I got some pictures of it the way it was before, so I should be able to put it back together. The hydraulic shop that I brought these two cylinders to that couldn't do the project, they did help me with something else. These safety blocks on here are like corroded, you can see this. There's aluminum pieces like flaking off here. So I don't trust that. It, it almost has like a bulge to it. And um, that could be a really bad thing if that failed. So I wanted to get new ones. So here's the story. They actually lost the other block that I had because I had it on the cylinders. They found this one, but they lost the other one. So I was like, well, what am I gonna do now? And, and so they, they got me this block here and it's not quite the same, but I think it'll work. This is a newer valve that's actually supposed to be better, so maybe this is a good thing. And so, this is the way it was before where the safety block was on the side and now it's on the top. But these two ports are on the top and they're on the top here. The only thing is they're a lot more left and right than they should be, but I think I can make it work. And then on the other side, It'll be more like this, so I'll have them, so 
So I got I got two of the same setups here, except one will just get flipped like this. So it's kind of like a mirror image of the other one. So I just need to change over the different fittings on it, and I might have to get a hydraulic hose or two made because they might not be long enough or whatever. So this this part here mounts on the cylinder, and then this gets mounted to it. So on this one, it has a bigger port, so we adapted it down to this size, which is half inch pipe. And then I can just put this right on there like that. This had a nipple on it before, so I just have to get that off with a pipe wrench. And then this adapter goes into this piece instead of having a nipple in between now. So that's good. And then these two ports, like I said, they're facing up already, so we'll just have to see how close. I know it's going to be close. There's not much slack in them, so hopefully we don't have to get any new hoses made. Because if we have to get one hose made, chances are we're going to have to get the exact same hose for the other cylinder too. So it could get expensive. I'm hoping I don't have to do all that. But I am happy to not have these valves in here. That's definitely for sure. But it did cost me 500 bucks for two of these. They're 250 a piece. But that's with the valve and everything, the fittings and all that stuff.
I am like genuinely excited right now. This is like a major step in putting this machine back together. And this has been so far in the making. This thing's just been in the way for a long time. Got discouraged about it a bunch of times because because of those cylinders, basically. Those two cylinders really were the main things that were really holding everything up. So the only few things that I have left to do on this, I need to clean it all off. I think it deserves a nice bath. I think I owe it at least that. And then I also need to mess with these hoses too. You can see this one's bent. So I need to bend this back the right way. And I need to add more of these channel pieces right here. These channel link things. I need to get this back together because I really can't extend the boom right now until I do that. I also need to check everything over. Like this chain is just frozen solid, so I need to free that up. Get some lube on there. Might need an adjustment. In general, this whole hose assembly right here just needs some attention. Hopefully I can bend this back straight enough. I got that one pipe bent back into shape. I'm sure I could spend some more time getting the rest of this a little bit better, but at least it's not choked up now. So I was able to actually extend the boom all the way out and test it out last night. It was kind of dark, that's why I didn't film it. But now I need to worry about putting this back together here. These are like links, it's like a chain. It's made out of plastic and it keeps everything lined up perfectly. And without that, the hoses can droop and they can also go out like this. I thought I had enough links to do the whole thing right from the start, but I don't think I do so I'm going to have to reuse whatever ones are still good. So I guess 
any ones that still have this piece going across and the sides intact that should be good and then whatever I don't have I'll replace you can individually put one on at a time you don't have to undo the hoses to get them on or anything they they go on and then this piece goes over so that you can put them in place right where they are and then if you need to get it on the hose you can take this part apart right here just by doing this back together like that. I think the most efficient way to do this is to put them all together first, get all the bad ones out, slide all the good ones over, and then I'll just be putting from wherever it stops with the old good ones to the new ones.
That's not too bad. I think I can live with that. The reason I had to do that is because at the end here, these links are supposed to go right in that hole. And it was probably another inch and a half to two inches this way. So it couldn't make it. So I knew that that was gonna take up some of the slack. And I think I only need like another maybe quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. And then I think it'll go in there. I might be able to stretch it that far. The next thing I need to do is try to get these pipes to stay together. So there's a cover for this whole thing and I'm gonna keep that off for a while because I wanna study how this happens here and I wanna make sure that it's not gonna bind up. Because once you put that cover on, you can't see what's going on. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, working on this machine was a lot of work. Was it worth it? Yes. This is a machine that I've wanted for a long time. For anybody that works construction, you know how valuable a machine like this is. A boom lift is pretty nice too, but this can actually lift materials up. And it can be a boom lift too if you get a basket for it, which I'm probably gonna get. So that is the capacity chart. Basically, if you have the boom all the way retracted, you can do 6,000 pounds from anywheres on there. And then it gets less and less the further you extend the boom out. So the least amount is 1,500, and that goes up to like 35 degrees, and then after that it goes to 2,000 and 3,000 and 4,000. So I guess you can do like 36 feet from the center of the forks to the very highest point. But at that point, it's only 10 feet out. So getting that high is something you'd have to be right on the side of the building for. Eventually, I'd like to get a bigger one that's got like a 10,000 pound capacity. It's got the outriggers on the front. But this will work for now for this house. One of the cool things about a telehandler is that you can put a bucket on there and then you can scoop rock and stuff into a foundation. Anything that you need a long reach for, like stuff on the pond or whatever, you can use a bucket for that. And the bucket just slips right on the forks. But they also make a quick attach. The four wheel steering is really nice, four wheel drive. You can really get into some tight places with the four wheel steering. So let's go over the finances real quick. I bought this for five grand. That was delivered to me for five grand. And then I had a thousand into the cylinder on the front. I had 2,500 into those cylinders. So that's what, 8,500. And then I had a bunch of miscellaneous stuff like the manifold, the injectors, um, just like other seal kits that they didn't end up using and new batteries, fluids. So I'd say I'm probably somewhere around 9,500 for it altogether. Which to be fair, you can't get much of a telehandler for that kind of price, but you do find one every once in a while. So it's not like the greatest deal in the world, but I feel a big sense of accomplishment with this machine because this has been so long and it's been sitting around and I've been getting discouraged about it. And now that it's finally done, it's like, the greatest feeling ever and I guess the next project on this machine would be to rebuild the cylinders this engine has liners in it so I can easily rebuild this motor with not too much work like I can just pull the liners out pull the pistons out and I can put the new stuff in in like a weekend it's not that hard of a job you don't have to take the motor out it's called an in-frame rebuild and a lot of bigger semi trucks that's what you would do you just we build it in frame and there's nice easy access the only thing I have to do is get the drive shaft off the bottom and then that's completely open which is great the oil pan is right there it's accessible and then on the top I got plenty of room up here but I'm definitely not going to worry about that because the machine will work just fine the way it is it just smokes a little bit more it might be losing a little bit of power but it's not affecting anything just rev it up a little bit more so that's it for now, and I'll see you guys on some of the videos with this in it.
Yeah. It's up there. Going. Going?